Well, hello and welcome to our first holiday special live stream with my beloved who's in joining us for the first time. And her name is... I'm Marie. And guess what? I'm real. <laughs> She's real. She's not the photograph that you <laughs> see behind me in most of my videos. I've actually invited my sweetheart, my beloved, to join us tonight to answer some of the questions that came in from the group. Um, which mostly centers around our relationship, how we met, uh, some of the challenges we face in our relationship, and I'm excited to have my beloved with me tonight. <laughs> how do you feel about doing this? Uh, this is fun. I've never done anything like this, so I apologize in advance for any bloopers, but hey, oh, well, we're going to make the best of it. <laughs> well, this is very impromptu. This isn't script, and I literally, <laughs> other than asking that she get ready, I didn't prepare her whatsoever. So um, we're doing a test run to see how we work together. Uh, this will be interesting for us, and I'm very excited to have you all join us tonight. So many of you have asked me about my relationship. Many of you have been following me for a very long time and you've known my journey and my journey from after my divorce and some of the dating uh, or some of my relationship history. So many of you have been very kind and very generous um, expressing how you felt about how I've shared my content with you all. Interestingly enough, my sweetheart has much of a, j a journey, not <laughs> similar to mine, but you have your own experiences of how you got to where you're at today. Mm -hmm. And would you be willing to share with everyone um, our age difference? Because many people think you're 20 years younger than me. So what's our age difference? Seriously? Yeah. Okay. I'm a year older than him. <laughs> She's a year older than me. So I want everyone to know that I am not this guy that's, uh, you know, basically dating younger woman. I've got an older woman uh, in my life. And that just illustrates that not all men are seeking younger women. So I hope um, most of you recognize that there are good men out there that are seeking a serious relationship. So um, with that said, I think I'd like to share kind of how we met with the group and the challenges we faced because... You know, right off the bat, well, first off, we were a long distance relationship. And I say were because we now live together. Yes, so, that is true. Um, my question is, are we going to share the relationship, how it evolved from my perspective or from your perspective? Um, so let's see. It says the freeze. <laughs> I think there's something wrong with the camera. So I hope it's working. It looks like we have people in here. So that's good. Um, so let's start with. We'll start with your perspective because you, well, first off, I want to officially say she wrote me first on a dating site and that dating site was match.com. So you initiated mm -hmm. contact. Well, he seems to think that that was our first contact, but our, our first contact was actually one year prior to that. And he didn't give me the time of day. So, <laughs> um, so then a year later, I wrote, uh, I, I wrote to him and he wrote back uh, basically thank you, but no thank you, you know, you live in Chicago, I live here, and, you know, so when, so I, I wrote back, because I'm like, you know what, look, I was raised in LA, I have two kids in LA, I have no problem moving to LA, um, and, you know, I think, you know, we would get along, and so he said, wow, that's a lot of stuff to unpack, <laughs> that was the first time I heard the word unpack, and I'm like, What's there to unpack? Did you read it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was actually really impressed with what you shared. I was really impressed with how you um, articulated your point for me to consider someone long distance because, you know, I really didn't want to do long distance dating. I talk about long distance dating with my community and I don't feel like it's a good move for most people. Right. So you you made an argument that at least made me want to consider her. But I'd be candid with you, and you know this, I really, even when we first met. He didn't I, like me. Wait, 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 wait. First <laughs> off, let's clarify this. Not he when I like first me. physically <laughs> met you. When we first spoke on the phone, I didn't feel like we were a fit. Yeah, well. And, and then what did you do next? I called you a week later thinking, oh my gosh, that, that last conversation went so well. And what did I say? <laughs> 
I didn't like our last conversation. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, wow, okay. Can so, we share why I didn't like you can, it? You can okay, so I said to her, I felt like you talked all about yourself and you didn't ask me any questions. And what did you say after that? I said, yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> and actually by her sharing that, by her owning it, it actually made me think, you know what? I want to get to know you a little bit more because you owned it. And that was that was really important to me. Well, and you know, now when you think back, when I didn't do a lot of dating, um, I did a lot of meet and greets, but I don't call those dates. Um, and I felt that I needed to tell everybody my story so they knew about me and, and then go from there. Um, his perspective is different. You know, he wants to be asked questions. I'm not somebody that just- Yeah, I don't like do volunteering. I like, to, I like to be invited in the conversation. I don't like to overshare, although I do unpack things. So we it, talked about oh, that yeah, earlier. So, <laughs> so in that conversation, we said, let's be Facebook friends, you know, let's keep in touch. You know, if either one of us is ever in town, let's connect with one another. Well, and the other thing is that I did come to California often. Um, last year was a little bit different because I was in a car accident. So it changed things a little yeah. bit for me. But when I came out here in November and December, I blew her he off. Blew me off. <laughs> so wait a minute. Let me rewind for a second. So first, she we met uh, in May of 2021 via the dating app, but she believes we met a year prior to that, or at least connected with each other. Mm -hmm. So for about eight or nine months, we just kept in touch. We called each other. It wasn't even romantic. It was just like friendship. Yeah, you were liking yeah. posts on my Facebook page. I was liking posts on your page. So when she came to visit, I wasn't in really a good mood. I wasn't really in a good place when you came that first visit. I had just had a brief encounter with a woman who totally messed me up. So I wasn't in the mood. I didn't blow you off intentionally. Well, I know that now, but yeah. at the time I'm like, okay, what? I'm not somebody that is, I, I don't want to say that I chase people. I put myself out there. I have no problem staying in touch and stuff. But when, you know, he tells me, oh yeah, one thirty would be a good time. And then he says uh, that, but you have to come here. I'm like, I didn't run a Well, car. I was working. I had I only a, I was working and I had a slot available and it didn't work out. Yeah, well, yeah. So okay. then then the next time I came out of here, it didn't work either. Yeah. So, yeah. So fast forward a few months after that, I was coming out to Chicago to officiate a wedding uh, for a dear friend of mine. And I called you up and said, hey, do you want to meet up? Yeah, before that. Oh, yeah, we did talk. Well, that's you, right. We did talk. Like in January, he had contacted me and he said. Oh, um, that's right. I forgot about this. You know, like, oh, so how's the dating world going? And I'm like, eh, it's going. I turned it off. I turned it on. I mean, we all go through the same things of just getting overwhelmed with just the nonsense of it. And, um, and so we, you know, we talked a little bit about that and then. And but I, by the way, me. and then I would I'd leave her messages. If we don't meet anyone, if you, neither one of us meet someone in six months, let's just meet, fall in love, and get married. This was before I came out for the visit. I would make little innuendos like that. So, what did you think of those little innuendos? Oh, I I thought yeah, in your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so okay, so now it's uh, it's April. I said I'm coming out to visit. Yeah. So he said he was coming out to visit. I cleared, I thought I cleared my schedule. Wait a minute, didn't you offer yes, something to I me? I did, I did. I offered to pick him up at the airport because he was staying downtown where I was living. It was very convenient to just, you know, pick him up at the airport. However, I didn't check that I had a hair appointment and we all know the hair appointments are very difficult to change at times. <laughs> so I, you know, I had to call him back and say, hey, I'm really sorry, but my appointment is going to run into when your flight gets in and to drive back to the airport was not a good deal. And it turned out that particular day there was a madhouse on the freeway anyway, and it took me an hour and a half from the airport to get to downtown. But I did finally make it and we met. At we met a, at a restaurant. Yeah. And it was yeah. a really gorgeous restaurant overlooking the river. Uh, just a really great choice, by the way, sweetheart. 
Uh, and what happened when we first saw each other? So when I first saw him, you know, it just, I, you know, I feel like I've known him for so long. So I give him a hug and a kiss and. and was, Wait, did you give me a French kiss? I did not. That, that's what you like to tell people. I did not. I don't do that. In fact, I usually just give a kiss on the cheek because Colombia, I'm Colombian, by the way. Colombians, that's just the norm. You yeah. you greet somebody with a kiss on the cheek, but he kind of turned his head, so it was kind of like. Yeah, hey, you kiss me on the lips. Yeah, Come on. lips, <laughs> lips, cheek, kind of. <laughs> so we sat at a high top uh, table. We ordered a couple drinks, mm -hmm. and we proceeded to talk for the next six or seven hours. We closed the place down. We had we a great the place time. Down. Yeah, had a great time. And, but I said, you know, I'm not really sure I want to do a long distance relationship. Remember that? Yeah. And yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> but, I, but I was kind of vacillated in the back of my head because I thought, oh my God, she's this amazing woman, or at least that's how I felt. But I was really reluctant to do a long distance relationship. So, but what happened next was we, um, we went our separate ways and we didn't know if we were going to see each other again. But I call. I texted you the next day and said, um, "Well, he wanted yeah. me to go to this wedding with him. Yeah, um, but I had to get there after, after the um, the dinner. And I'm like, she was crashing the wedding. I'm like, nah, that's not my style. I don't crash weddings." No, you had a, no, you had. Asked oh, that's me. right. You I did. I me. did have permission to invite you. So, but what happened was, I the next day, I couldn't stop thinking about her. I texted her and I said, "I really, I really miss you. I appreciate you. Will you be my date to the wedding? I know you're crashing it, but you know, go outside your comfort zone and join me." So I did. And she shows up in this stunning red dress. Oh, my God, drop dead. Well, she, you can tell she's drop dead gorgeous, <laughs> but she looks stunning. And from that moment on, I knew, I knew I really wanted to get to know you. And then I started to think, you know what, maybe long distance won't be so bad. It'll be fun. It'll be traveling, you know. And he was going against everything he preaches. Yeah. So, um, and at the same time, though, when, oh, and we had a great time. And when I got back home, we immediately arranged. Um, well, I was already coming to Los Angeles for my birthday uh, to spend it with my two kids that live here. Because I have two kids in Chicago and two kids here. And I feel like the ones here always get neglected. So I try and come as much as I can. And they're the ones that are not married. So uh, my best friend planned this dinner at you know Mastro's and stuff. And so I already made the plans. Um, you just extended a few extra days to hang out, I hang out with me. I just extended it. And initially it was um, supposed to be just like a three dates kind of thing, three yeah. days. Um, we ended up spending three days <laughs> unpacking our entire lives, laying the cards on the table. I mean, we shared the good, the bad, the ugly, because we thought, you know what? We actually were serious about this. We said... If this is something worth exploring, then let's just, like I said, lay our cards on the table, the good, the bad, the ugly. And what I mean to say is we shared each of our marriages, what we liked, what we didn't like. We shared our past relation or our significant relationship after our first marriage. And then where the our dating experience is. We even shared our personal development work. You know, you had done Lifespring. I had done Hoffman and Insight and you had done The Naked Divorce. And by the way, that's a plug for go to thenakeddivorce.com. It's a great, or at least I'm pitching for you. It's a great. Um, I probably should tell her about it. Yeah, we should. <laughs> um, but a great way to heal after divorce. Um, so we felt like if we we're going to explore this relationship, then we would have to do this in the same city. I mean, so we began early conversations about um, how are we going to take this distance from long distance to short distance. And what and during that time, we also arranged um, a couple visits here, which were extended visits. I mean, the first one was 12 days. The next one was 18 days. And they were only a two weeks apart each. And even during the 18 day visit, that included a trip to Mexico for my birthday. Yes, it did. And my point in bringing this up is it's I've often said everyone knows I'm really big on spending a lot of time together. I know if you live in the same city, my belief is you should spend three or four days and nights a week together doing shared activities, <laughs> hobbies, mutual interests, you know, so forth and so on. She's heard my rhetoric over and over again. 
But my point is you really don't get to know someone until you spend a lot of time with them. So I'm not a big proponent of piecemealing the dating process. I'm a big proponent of spending a lot of quality time together. So those first three days, initially it's we're going to go out to dinner and we're going to go bike riding and we're going to go this. And then we decided, no, we're not going to do that. We're just going to. We're just going to sit around in pajamas. <laughs> and, and basically, we literally, you know, got on the floor, picnic on the floor, and we just... Ordered we, food. Yeah, and just said, well, let's just unpack. And you learned what unpacking I really was. I learned what unpack was. Oh, <laughs> I got to back up, though. Yeah. So um, when we were talking on the phone, uh, before I came out for my birthday, I had told my daughter about him. And I said, um, you know, like he's a dating and relationship coach. And I don't know, he's a little exhausting. <laughs> so that's all I said, because like he's asking questions and questions. And, and so I thought, eh, I, I'm just not sure about this. I don't know if I can handle this. So when I told my daughter that I had a date with him after my birthday, she's like, oh, the exhausting guy? <laughs> so let me I'm ask like, you yeah, a question. One. All the relationship gurus will tell you not to interrogate someone. Yeah. Okay, don't make it an interview process. Everyone will tell you not to do that. Why was that worth doing for us? Because we had a small time frame. Well, was it I just a small time frame? Well, I, look. I, don't, I, I, I felt like I don't have time to waste time. time. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I didn't want to make, waste my time on you. What if, yeah. you know... Look at the camera. Just, <laughs> Tell <no>. them. <laughs> I didn't want to waste my time. Um, so I wanted to get as much accomplished in those three days before, you know, to see if I wanted to even go down that road. Yeah. And you know, this is where, I, again, I'm a big proponent of, of don't waste your time with someone who's not a fit with you. So when I say interrogate someone, Yes, it may not be fun. It may not be attractive. At the same time, I think when two people like each other, it's actually good to dig in the nooks and crannies to see where you're actually similar with one another. And what's interesting about you and I, I love it how we literally are thinking the same thing at the same time. We have our, our backstories are very similar to one another to some degree. And we, we always seem on the same page. So it didn't feel like an interrogation. It felt like it was like a crash course into getting to know someone. So anyway, that's my two cents but, on that one. But the other side of that is that um, I wasn't sure that I was that into him. And what? he thought I was really into oh, him. Oh, that's right. I so forgot. that's why he thought I was like so into him and i'm like okay i, I really want to get to know this guy hey wait because... what's not to be into <laughs> <laughs> oh and then he was really offended because i had never seen any of his videos before. oh god i forgot about that she'd never seen any of my videos i wasn't offended i was He's like what uh, you haven't uh, looked and i'm like no, I don't want to watch. I don't your want video. to watch your videos. I want to see the real person. Oh, and I didn't. I thought that watching these videos, I don't know how it would sway me. So I thought, no, I'm not going to watch any of his videos. Oh, and he did give me his book, and I'm starting. She still reading. hasn't read it yet. So after not seven months. So listen, we've got some questions from the members of the group. Okay. I'd like to, uh, you know toggle off a few of these uh, to see how you felt. So, um, okay, here's one from Renee. She says, what questions did you need answered before moving in? Well, I needed to know that he wasn't a psycho, that's for sure. <laughs> well, how can you not know that I'm not an Amber Heard? Well, yeah. Or Johnny Depp? <laughs> um, no, we, what questions? Like, hmm. what was the, like, if you had to say what was... Well, I one had thing no... you wanted answered, not what question, but what did you need to feel safe to make this decision? Well, first of all, I wasn't sure that I was that I was going to move in with you. I've never lived with somebody. Um, okay. I've been in long term relationships and marriage, and you know, so like I didn't I didn't know that this was for me. Um, so I started looking to see, okay. 
it's a lot easier because I, you know, as even though I have my kids there and grandchildren, I do not um, have a job where I. Well, you're retired. Yeah, I'm, I'm retired. And so I thought, OK, I'm going to um, look to move there. Um, that way I could spend more time with my kids here as well. And then uh, then I realized how expensive California was. <laughs> But, but those are different questions. No, like, what did different. you need to feel safe with me? Like, why did you feel safe? I spent safe? three days with you. How could I not well, feel Well, but a safe? lot of people go travel long distance. They spend a weekend in a bubble, and they think they know someone. Now, so this wasn't, I mean, we didn't talk about stuff that you talk about when you're in a bubble. We talked about, like, real-life things, like what you're looking for in a person, yeah. um, the type of... I think we were almost like... It was almost like prove me instead of prove me right, prove me wrong. Does that make sense? In other words, instead of approaching it from a fantasy perspective, we were like, I want to know the nitty gritty. <laughs> That's how it felt. I mean, I don't yeah. mean it like we had fun, too. Don't get me wrong. But I felt like what the, the, the way we structured it, it really allowed for our, our vulnerable, authentic, transparent selves to come out. And one thing I want to say about Marie is that she's incredibly transparent and she's authentic. If, if She basically says, don't ask me a question to something you yeah. don't want to know the answer to, because sometimes I do that. And I appreciate that, that she's in integrity always. And while that's not easy to recognize in the beginning, I think when somebody shares something with you that's uncomfortable, um, that's something you may not like, kind of like, like um, I think you need new deodorant. <laughs> I think your deodorant isn't working. working. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she shared that with me. I felt like that was a good starting block. So, okay, so let's but, see what- But you know what, Let me, before oh. you go on, okay. um, it makes it sound like we decided to move in together after three days. No, no, no. no. We, we it, took a couple. It took another six weeks before we took that leave. Yeah, we took our next visit and the visit after that. And what happened was she just happened to go, I'm looking at apartments there and she or uh, places to live or we're in a condo, actually. She found a place that was literally walking distance from where I did, previously lived and we checked it out. We just fell in love with it. And as many, many of you know from the videos that I shoot, I think we have a great place to live. Yeah. And it wasn't it. So it's not like we said, OK, we're going to do it now. It's just, you know, it. I, did, I was ready to leave Chicago anyway. Uh, she wanted to beat the winter. I wanted to leave before <laughs> winter came. But um, so it was either I was moving to Florida or I was moving here. So it just came down to, okay, this is what I had planned. What do you think? And, and then we just decided, okay, let's do it. All right, let's see what other questions we have. Let's see, since you were in a long distance relationship, what are some of the questions? Oh, that's, we've already got that. So um, before you decided to move in together, what kind of conversations did you have? Was it more about the end game of possible permanent partnership or marriage, or was it more just about being together? Also, did you bring up living together or did she? So who brought up living together first? Um, I don't know. I really don't know. I remember that I sent you this. Well, because I you think had also you, said that you were looking at moving. I think I think it was you were thinking about moving somewhere here first. Yeah. And you looked at the how expensive it was, and then I probably said, "Well, why don't we just live together?" <laughs> that may have been how it happened. I don't know, but it, it was really quick. Yeah. But I mean, and I, and not that I'm recommending this for everyone. At the same time, though, you know, it occurs to me like you're OK, really quickly. How long did your parents know each other before they got married? Twelve days. OK, my parents the same way. So it makes me wonder, you know, is it better to dive in and maybe fail than have it drag out for years, which a lot of people do. They have these long relate these you know, not even relationships, they're dating for years without any real destination. And I'm not suggesting it's safe to do this because here's the thing, look, to some degree we're strangers with each other, but at least, you know, I had a public persona, you know. That I never looked at. Yeah, you never looked, but you knew <laughs> I had a public persona. Look, I get that there's a lot of people, we don't know who they are, and I'm a big proponent of vetting people. It's why I teach this in my private coaching. 
But at the end of the day, I'm a big believer now, it's better to dive into the deep end of the pool to see if it works versus dragging it out. Some people drag out relationships for years that it's gonna, I don't wanna say fail, but they're gonna end. And I like that we dove in the deep end quickly. Well, let's face it, we're not 25. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so to me- We're not even 35, 45, <laughs> or 55. Okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> no, but- it just, you know, I, I thought to myself, you know, what the heck? I talked I talk to my kids, talked to my daughter, and my daughter was like, Mom, he seems like a nice guy. Go, <laughs> go do it. I mean, it, I laugh because it, it's, I was so proper my whole life, and here I'm doing something that my kids might view as not proper. And, um, but it doesn't. and then they were, all, they were all supportive. And it's like, okay. So. <laughs> They're doing this. We, we revisit our journey just like we did with you all right now. We oftentimes revisit our journey and some of the, some of the little bumps along the way, and there weren't really that many. Thankfully, we tend to get along really well with each other. Um, whenever we joke with one another, we have a saying that we say to one another um, because of where we started and where we are today. Do you know what that is? Yes, like for example, you know, we talk about when he blew me off when I was in town, yeah. not once, twice. And then, you know, then we go, oh, and, and here, here we are. are. <laughs> <laughs> so it has been a true pleasure to enter your lives today, to share a bit of our story. We hope to be doing this more often. We mo hope to be doing some YouTube live streams, certainly for our group here. I am... Um, I'm really grateful for this group, um, Midlife Love Mastery. This is a great opportunity to talk about some of the challenges that we face at midlife. And, and you know, we both had a significant, we had a marriage, we had a significant relationship after that. And, and I believe that prepared us for where we are today. We both had a lot of not a lot of dates. Well, I had a lot of dating dates. Dating apps. Dating app experiences, flybys, coffee dates, that sort of thing. But ultimately, what I do want to say is, it's as I talk about frequently in my videos, it's imper important to do the individual work. And what I mean by that personal development work, that self-help, that spiritual work, so that you can be prepared to be in a relationship. So you can have the relationship skills and the emotional maturity. And Ultimately, I think what we both had in common was we knew we'd meet someone special. Mm -hmm. We just knew it. We didn't doubt it. And I'm here to say to everyone, when you have doubt, it's going to carry forward. When you come from a place of knowing, and I do believe we both came from that place, we were able to find each other. And I always jokingly say, thank you for finding me because you are, by, you are the most amazing person in my life. And I'm very grateful for you. Likewise. Oh, give me a kiss. Mwah. All right, everyone. Well, I think this will be a great place to wrap up today. So as I wrap up my typical videos, I always give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. But I'm going to give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of appreciation. Thanks for joining us. Can I get one? Okay, you can have one Aww, back. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Hey, everyone, hugs are a great source of love, and I want you to reach out to someone right now, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And I want to share our love with you on a regular basis, and I hope we do come back for more. We'll see. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a <laughs> great right. evening. Bye, -bye. Bye now. Bye now. Hold on.